Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sensor Plane Photography Podcast, where light and technology come together. I'm your host, Jason O'Dell, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about cropping. Not cropping in post-production, but cropping in your camera. And uh, I brought my uh, new Nikon D810 today. I want to talk a little bit about the reasons why you might want to crop, some settings you can do in the camera uh, to help you visualize the crop, and why you might want to use it. Now, cropping is something that people like to do um, in post-processing. We want to get rid of something on the edge of the frame. You say you, you try to crop it. But with today's cameras, um, you know, we've got so many megapixels. Uh, this is a 36 megapixel camera. Um, one thing you might consider is instead of thinking about having 36 megapixels uh, allowing you to crop more after the fact, um, you can you can do a couple of things. We're taught as photographers to always try to crop in the camera. And what I mean by that is you're going to get a better image if you start composing and cropping, if you will, in the viewfinder. How do you do that? Change your position. Maybe you need to zoom the lens. Do those kinds of things. Why should you crop in the viewfinder? Because if you've got this much resolution in your camera, why not use it? I mean, sure, you can crop down, but you're always going to get a higher quality image if you've got more pixels on your subject. So try to work on that just as a general exercise. But there are times when cropping in the camera can be useful, and that can be um, when you want to use different frame aspect ratios or to try to just go ahead and get closer, if you will, to your subject. You're just cropping anyway. And this is particularly useful um, if you've got a camera that has more than uh, 16 or more megapixels. Now, Nikon in particular has had cameras around that have uh, offered different crop modes ever since they came out with the D3. The D3 was the first camera that allowed you to change crop modes in the camera. You could, you could use the full frame, the 35 millimeter FX Nikon sensor, or you could crop into different modes. Um, a 5 to 4 aspect ratio, which is useful for you know studio work where you want to make an 8x10 print. Uh, a 1 to 0.2x crop mode. And then a full DX or 1.5 APS-C crop mode. Now, with the D3, that was a 12 megapixel camera. When you started cropping in the, in the camera, uh, you threw away a lot of those pixels. And I never really used that mode much with my D3. Just really occasionally tried to use it. When I moved up to the D4 and now also having a D800, the crop modes become much more feasible because you get that much more resolution. Before I talk about that, let's talk about some of the reasons why you might consider using a different crop mode in your camera if it has that feature. The first and most obvious reason is for things like telephoto work. If you are going to be cropping the picture anyway in post to try to get perceive, make it seem like you're getting closer to your subject, why not just enable the cropping in the camera? What cropping in the camera is going to do uh, for you is it's going to let you visualize the smaller frame. It's also going to um, create a smaller file. So if your camera's in a crop mode, um, you're, you're not going to be using as many of the pixels. And as such, you're going to have smaller files. You'll be able to store more images on the card. Another reason why you might crop um, would be to get the aspect ratio that you like. So the, the D3 and the D800s um, have a 5 to 4 aspect ratio mode, which is a different aspect ratio from the other two crop modes. The normal aspect ratio in a DSLR, uh, in a, it, with the major ones, with this format, is uh, 36 by 24, 3 to 2 aspect ratio, roughly. So it's a little wider than it is tall. But if you do a lot of studio work, um, and you want to make 8x10, 11x14, or 16x20 uh, inch prints, you know that if you've ever had to do that from a regular size aspect ratio, you have to crop the frame. And so sometimes you might not have it framed right. If you can set the camera to crop in the camera to the 5 to 4 aspect ratio, that produces a natural 8x10 print without you having to crop it. Plus you get the crop guides in the viewfinder. That can be really useful when you go to frame your subject. The last reason why you might want to consider cropping is for uh, in the camera using the crop modes is for performance. Um, this D810 shoots five frames a second. The D800 that it is replacing shoots at four frames per second. 
If I set the camera to the 1.2 or DX crop modes, and I use the optional battery grip that Nikon sells to put on here, I can shoot, instead of 5 frames per second, I can go from to 6 frames per second with 1.2x crop, and to 7 frames per second with full DX crop. So not only would I be cropping the frame, potentially getting a little closer to my subject with a shorter lens, but I would also be um, increasing the frame rate. Now again, like I said, you're throwing away pixels when you crop, so doing so means you lose resolution, you're not going to be in, able to enlarge the image quite so much. So let's take, for example, um, those calculations. The, we'll start with the 16 megapixel camera, the Nikon D4, D4S. If you use the full frame sensor, it's a 16 megapixel image. If you crop it to 1 to 2, just a little bit of a crop, um, you're down to an 11 megapixel image. The 5 to 4 aspect ratio, a little bit larger resolution, it's 13 megapixels, you're not cropping quite so much off the frame. And at DX, where you go to the 1.5 crop, you're really only using the center part of the frame, you're getting a 6.8, so an under 7 megapixel image. Now, there are plenty of times when that may be useful, but you also have to consider you're not going to be able to enlarge quite as much because now all the noise and the pixels get um, expanded and enlarged even more when you use those crops. Just like if you were cropping your image down in post-processing, the same rules apply if you do it in the camera. So that's not a tremendous amount of resolution, and with my D4, I'll use the 1 to 2 crop frequently, uh, but I won't really use the DX crop mode. It's just not worth it um, in most situations. Take the D800, the D800E, and the, the D810. That's a 36 megapixel camera. So full frame, 36 megapixels, that's a lot of pixels. If I go 1 to 2, I drop down to 25 megapixels, still a lot. The 5 to 4, I meant back up a little higher again, 30 megapixels. That's a lot of information. And at full DX crop, 1 to 5, or, or 1.5x, uh, I should say, 15.3 megapixels. So almost as much as the D4 does um, full frame. So in a D800 and cameras that have, you know, 24 or more megapixels, the, the cropping becomes a, a real feasible option for getting a little bit closer to your subject in the camera with a shorter focal length because you're getting that crop factor, um, but also smaller files and potentially faster frame rates. The, the challenge with cropping, um, one of the things that you need to know about how, is how to turn it on and how to visualize it. So to get the crop modes enabled, um, it's going to depend on your camera. So I'm going to go into the menus, and what you need to do is the cropping option are going to be under custom menu 7 under the controls, under, not 7, but F. And in the D810, it's, um, you're going to need to assign one of your function or preview buttons to and turn on the different crop modes. Or you can do it directly from the camera menu. So when you go into the shooting menu, if you want to set the, um, the image area menu option where it says choose image area, and you can say I want DX crop or I want to use FX or whatever. You can do that manually every time. Or you can set it up to customize a button with a dial turn to enable you to switch back between those crop modes on the fly. Now I love that option, especially when I'm shooting birds or action, because most of the time I'll be using the full full frame in the viewfinder, and then by pressing the fun, function button, and then just turning the rear command dial, I can toggle through between 36, uh, 30 by 20, all the different crop modes right there in the camera. So to get that enabled, you've got to go to your, your custom setting menu, the pencil, under F, controls, and then where it says assign FN button, the function button, or if you want to assign the preview button, one of those different buttons, you can do that too to assign a button, and you go to a button with the moving the control dials, and you would just say, okay, so press plus command dials, and then you get this option, and one of the options is the cropping image area mode, and then you can select which of the modes you want to have active. So if you don't want to use the 5 to 4 or the DX mode and you just want to use 1 to 2, you can just enable the ones you want. Otherwise, it will cycle through all of the modes. Pretty cool stuff. The other thing is viewing in the viewfinder. Um, depending on the camera that you have, you'll get a viewfinder display that overlays either a line, a framing guideline, 
or sometimes it will mask out the area. Now the D4 is a $6,000 camera. It automatically masks out, it grays out the image um, uh, LCD in the viewfinder a gray mask appears when you switch into the crop modes. And that's super useful because when you're shooting action, um, you want to be able to frame, you don't want to cut things off, you, you know, and you're not using the entire viewfinder anymore. So that dark masking is really effective to help you frame. Other people like just having the line, just a framing line in, in the viewfinder, so they can see when things are coming into the frame from, from outside of the image frame. Now on the D800s and the D810, uh, the default mode is to use that just the regular image frame. And there's no custom setting in the crop modes that says to enable uh, the viewfinder to, to darken or to mask out that part of the viewfinder. But it turns out, I got a tip from my old podcast buddy Rick Walker, um, was talking to him, and uh, he mentioned that if you go into the menus in the D800s, and in, I've tried in the D800 and also the D810, if you go to the menus and you go into your autofocus option, so A, and what I'm going to go is find the AF point illumination. In the AF point illumination in the D810 is custom A6. It may differ slightly in your camera, the D800. Autofocus foc point illumination uh, it's by default it's turned on or set to auto. Now what that means is that the little autofocus point will light up red in the viewfinder. It turns out if you set this to off and then you just see the little dark autofocus indicators, your viewfinder will then mask in the crop modes. So when you switch to the crop modes, the viewfinder will mask instead of giving that little frame. So that's a cool tip if you've got a D800 or a D810 and it, and it may be possible in some of the other Nikon uh, cameras, I just haven't tried it. So, we talk about cropping today. It's really um, useful, uh, most useful with a higher megapixel camera. Again, you, you do it to get better framing, uh, to save memory card space, and also to potentially improve the shooting speed of your camera with some caveats. You need a battery grip and things like that. So, until next time, I'm Jason O'Dell. Thanks for joining me on the Sensor Plane. Don't forget to check out my website at www.luminescentphoto.com.